right into it guys right off the goddamn bat talking about dune so some of you have seen the film some of you have seen the sci-fi series uh some of you have uh read the original book but most of you i think haven't seen all, all the stuff or you know we ask people that have not familiar with the, the, the property um but that's okay guys because the movie right off the fucking bat starts with a lecture and a powerpoint nothing nothing screams cinema more than a lecture and a PowerPoint presentation on the state of the universe. This epic sci-fi picture chat. And it just st starts with a whole bunch of exposition and people pointing at planets and like all the names of all the different people, the dukes, the barons, the emperors. Names you're never going to remember. I don't know. There's the emperor's name in here. His name is Sargaram or something like that. I think his name is Saddam. I think it's Emperor Saddam. I want to say that's his name. I believe. Yeah, Saddam. His name is Saddam. <laughs> Emperor Saddam. But you get getting all this exposition right at the beginning, chat. Uh, just to let you know, like, this film uh, was a huge box office, uh, office failure back in the day. Had a very large budget of $40 million. Only made worldwide $30.9 million. They lost a whole lot of money on this picture. Uh, but, but it was so... It's odd to me that they would give this to David Lynch. One, that even David Lynch would be interested in making something like this. When you look at David Lynch, the guy is just known for being a little out there, a little weird. I mean, doing stuff like Twin Peaks or like Eraserhead or any other kind of film that he's done throughout his career, the fact that he would want to do a blockbuster, a sci-fi action blockbuster, it just kind of perplexes me. I, I, I really understand the reasoning. But apparently there were like a ton of different versions that people were trying to get going for years. Uh, I think since like the, the, the 70s, even before Star Wars chat, people were trying to get this uh, uh, going. There was a... The, the the one of the guys uh George I can't say his name uh Alejandro uh Jonadowski hope I'm saying that correctly he tried to do an adaptation years ago that fucking floundered um but yeah there was a there was a, a lot of attempts uh tons of uh, tons of directors were attached to this yeah I mean like in that apparently adaptation they're gonna have like Orson Welles is like Baron Harkonnen so yeah they they're attaching big names to it but just nothing happened for it. David Carradine was attached to this at one point. Like a ton of different actors. Uh, they had like an Italian filmmaker on it. And eventually it finally went to David Lynch, uh, who uh, was interested in it like in the early uh, 1980s, like 1981. And it was because of the popularity of films like Alien, Star Wars. People were like, okay, we need the big next big sci-fi epic, but this, fil this film has been in a state of flux for at least a decade. Let's get this guy on. And because Return of the Jedi had come out a year prior, I'm thinking, okay, what's going to be the next Star Wars? That's what they were pitching this film to be, Chad. And it did not reach it. It did not reach it at all. For for many reasons. Uh, I, want just because, I just think the source material itself, well, when, again, it's been, it's been a long time. It's been well over a decade, probably what, close to 15 years at this point. It was out eighth grade. It was middle school. So, yeah. God, it was, it, I probably read this in 2000, damn, what, 2007, 2006 maybe? It was like around that time, chat. So it was, it, was a, it was a long time ago. And I just don't think that, one, that you can tell the, the story of doing it in a single film. I know that uh, Denny Villeneuve, he's trying to do that right now, at least splitting into two parts, but I'm very curious to see how, what that film's going to be. Uh, I always thought the idea that this being a TV series be better but they fucking tried that and apparently that didn't work either so maybe this is one of those properties that's difficult to film but we'll see december 2020 chats when the movie's coming out uh i know i i for whatever reason i just have a sneaking suspicion that this is going to be one of those big flops i okay before we get into it, i have the I have a question for you guys do you guys think that this is going to be like this Den denny bell nuve's film that's going to be a commercial success you know, like people, people, I see Middlesbrough coming, Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, fair enough. I, I really enjoy the movie. Matter of fact, I enjoyed that movie uh, um, more the more I watch it, actually. I thought I was like, I enjoyed it when I first saw it in the theater, but I was like, wow, this is really good. Like, after I got it on Blu ray, I was able to kind of watch it in like two separate pieces. I was like, yes, this, this, this is a great film. No question about it. So, you guys are thinking it's going to work. So, Iron Laser, yes. Uh, I mean, it's macabre. No, it won't be a box of a success, in my opinion. Yeah, that's why I mean, it's like they're splitting these into two films. So apparently, they got some fucking confidence, chat. I want to see. 
I actually want to see right now. Then we'll get in the review because I'm very curious. Um, what the budget on this film is? There's not even at least a budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll see, guys. I don't know. I'm just uh, I'm doubting that it's going to be a uh, success. Personally, we'll see. Ultimate Dark Side hard to say. I mean, at the end of the day, we just don't know. But <sighs> I just didn't think that there was a lot of uh, anticipation for this property in general. To me, it's kind of gone stagnant, or pretty much is non-existent. Uh, Chrissy, I don't know. It's the only real big December movie of the year. It's true, so it's got a lot of space. And December is a great month for movies that want legs, so maybe. True. Miss Macaw, but it will stand the test of time and be a great... Uh, hopefully. Hopefully that is the... Yeah, hopefully it's just good. If it's good, then it's like, that's interesting. What are they going to do with part two? Is this going to release that as well? You're splitting this into two parts. Hmm. You think there's some properties that will never be able to be adapted? Sure. I always thought Doom was going to be one of those big ones that's just going to struggle forever. Oh. GV Hustle just joined recap. Yes, man. I'm just about to do the review. The scene by scene by scene by scene breakdown of David Lynch's Doom. Just tune in for I'm just curious people's general thoughts about this uh, upcoming 2020 film. And if you guys think it was going to be a, a box office failure, much like the original one. I was kind of curious about that. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, guys. So we'll get into it. So you know all the behind-the-scenes knots with this movie, Chad. They're trying to get this film made for at least 15 years. Many different filmmakers, many actors, many writers attached. Well, they finally, the studio said, well, you know what? Let's, let's go with this weird guy who made a film about a baby who, like, had pus coming out of his fucking head and a crazy dad. Let's do it. The guy that did an eraser head. That sounds good to me. Austinick, thank you so much for the host and welcome to the stream. Good to see you, friend. That's the guy who can direct this sci-fi epic. He's the next George Lucas. I could see him doing something like this, chat. And this movie starts out, just like I told you, with uh, the princess of the universe. Uh, I don't know what her name is. She's the princess of Emperor Saddam. And she's ta basically telling you, okay, this is the state of the universe. It's the year 10,092, I think. Um, the most valuable resource in the universe itself, chat, is the spice. And the spice can only be found on one planet, uh, 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 what is it called? Ar Arcasus? Arnacus? Arrakis! Arrakis! But it's also known as Dune. Chat, we're going to call it Dune because that's easier for me to say. But it's, it was it's the only, this element, it's used for everything in life, your everyday life. You get high to it. You, you see new things like a drug almost, chat. Improves you physically. Improves you uh, mentally. But it's also apparently used for space travel. It, it's able to bend space itself, chat. And you, go, you can go from one place to another vast light years within a span of like a minute. And that's it, chat. You, without even moving. Travel without even moving. And for hundreds and thousands of years, uh, the, the, the guild, the Spice Guild, has been exposed to this Spice chat. And, you know, different warring families and factions have been fighting over the Spice. Uh, and these, these again, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot in, in the first, like, ten minutes chat. These guys have mutated into these giant scrotum babies. And the scrotum babies help uh, with the, the space travel, basically. So you go to the scrotum babies with your ship. They, uh, 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 they ejaculate spice through their various vaginal orifice. I, I'm serious. Watch the fucking film. This is what happens. I'm not being disgusting on purpose, chat. They, they, they ejaculate on the ships. And then they bend space and time, and then they arrive at their destination. So I was like, okay, so again, you can use it to get high, you can improve your mental and physical attributes, and space travel. But with the space travel chat, you do become a giant scrotum baby with multiple vaginal orifices around you. So heads up with that. Um, so after her little uh, spiel chat, I'm the princess of the universe, everything like that, then we get to the PowerPoint presentation of the movie. Yay! <laughs> And so they start explaining like three different factions. Oh no, and, and the planet of uh, uh, of Arrakis, Dune. Like Dune is the planet where all the spices. It has a race of people called the 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 Farman, the Farin. I forget what they're called. Yeah, we're gonna call them the Farman. The Farman live there. They're like this nomadic people. Uh, a lot of people don't actually know how many people actually reside in the planet. They keep to themselves. It's like, hey, you guys keep to yourselves. Just gonna mind your spice. And it's like seems to be an okay relationship. No one seems bothered by it. We got the the planet of um I don't know what the planet's called, chat. Uh, there's another planet, which, which is ruled by House Atreides, and these are the good guys, chat. House Atreides are the good guys, ruled by Duke Leto Atreides. 
If you if you guys know the names of the plants, please let me know. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Oh, Blade Buzz here. I am doing well. How are you? I love the Dune. Uh, I love Dune. Cool book. Well, man, fucking help me out here. <laughs> help me out here. <laughs> Trying to explain all this. Eve, I thank you so much for the 41 biddies. The first donation of the stream. Oh, you might get Chris. There's a show on Netflix called Cyborg 009 called Justice, and I think you and the crew of Double Toasted should watch that show. It's really good. I'll check it out, man. Oh, Blaine Buzzlier. Blaine Buzzlier, thank you so much for the follow. You're my Huckleberry. So many new Huckleberries, Chad. I loved it. Saul Good, man. Good name. Saul Good, man. This book sounds fucking... It is fucking weird, man. At least the movie is. There's some of this stuff is absolutely in the book, but it's, it's, it, it, it's out there. They thought this was going to be the next Star Wars. Okay, so we know what you've got the Arrakis planet, Dune planet, Chalice of Spices. We got the House Atreides planet. House Atreides is this very noble family ruled by Duke Atreides. Uh, Duke Atreides married, uh, or didn't actually didn't marry chat. He, he fell in love with the witch. The witch is from the Council of Witches chat. And the Council of Witches wanted this witch to sleep with the Duke, but only produce daughters as a concubine. But she betrayed that. And she had a son instead because they had to stab the baby if it was a boy. But she's like, I can't do this to my son. And then uh, the Duke of the planet and the witch, they had a son. And this was Paul Atreides, Chad. He's the main character of the film. Meanwhile, we have the planet of Harkonnen. I know this is called Gideon Prime or something like that. I think it's called Gideon Prime. I don't know. And that's where all these kind of gross people live. Uh, you got, they're ruled by Baron Harkonnen. Which I, I, you saw his image, Chad. This is Baron Harkonnen. That's Baron Harkonnen. He is a very fat man who is filled with various skin diseases and needs like his pimples popped. And you see those pimples popping uh, quite often throughout the film. Just fucking leaking chat. Um, he needs like, he's, like, he's super morbidly obese and needs like a floating suit to get around. Uh, it's also, this film is a little homophobic too because he's always like lusting after men and everything like that. And again, it's, it was at that time where it's like, oh, if you... You, you know, when you ever had a gay character like a, in a film like this, he would always be the bad guy or something, the comedic relief. So it's like, ah, that's a little offensive. That's not nice. And he's always lusting after people. And then you have the other planet. Uh, I don't know what it's called. It's, it's, the, it's, it's Saddam's planet. That's where Saddam lives. Emperor Saddam. He's the ruler of the known universe, chat. Controls it all. Controlling all these warring families. And the, and the emperor's got a plan. He's like, well, you know what? The Trades is they there. Everyone loves them so goddamn much, and they're a threat to my power. They're growing in power. They're growing popularity. I don't like it. So this is what I'm gonna do. I got my plan. I'm gonna make a deal with the uh, Baron Harkonnen, who currently occupies a, uh, a a dune and is mining all the spice. I'm gonna tell Baron Harkonnen get the fuck out of there, and I'm gonna put a uh, uh, Duke of Trades in there. And here's the thing, it's a, it's a trap chat, because he says. So when he's there and he feels nice and acclimated, then we're all going to use all our forces to attack him. And the Baron Harkonnen will attack him with sleeper agents. We'll take him out, kill Paul, kill the witch concubine. We'll nail him good. Everyone, everyone's solid. And he's like, you know, like people are like, that sounds like a good plan. Except, you know, the Duke of Trey doesn't know about it. But Baron Harkonnen's on board, the Emperor's on board, everything's fine. But the Space Guild, who have the giant scrotum babies, they know about this plan, Jack, because they can see all. Uh, and they visit the Emperor unannounced. He's like, okay, listen. And they, 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 they were introduced to the scrotum baby right here. And the emperor's not really phased at all. He's like, oh, that's kind of weird. Uh, we have, the, like, the leader of the witch council. She's there with him. And she's like, I'm going to listen in on your meeting and make sure there's no shenanigans going on. And, like, when the scrotum baby comes in the room, chat, he's like, tell that witch to get the fuck out of here. The witch leaves, chat, but she's still using her mental powers. And the scrotum baby and the, the emperor sit down. They have a nice conversation. Uh, the scrotum baby says, listen, I know everything that you're doing right now. I see all you're using Baron Harkonnen to destroy uh, Duke Atreides because he's just too popular. And Emperor's like, yeah, you nailed it. Yeah, that's what I want to do. And he's like, okay, we are totally fine with that. We have no issue with that as long as the spice flows. Uh, and if you kill Paul Atreides, we have seen in the future and he could destroy us all. You got to kill that fucking kid. And he's like, sure, I mean, I was going to kill him anyway, but yeah, I'll, I'll make it a goddamn priority. And so the scrotum baby and his, like, guys, like, in the in the process of becoming scrotum babies, they get the fuck out of there. And then the witch comes in, she's like, I know about this Paul Atreides, my, my student, the, the witch concubine chap that's with the Duke. I sent her there to just have uh, girls with him. 
because they want to produce like the super bean chat. I forgot to tell you about the super bean. What am I? See, chat. There's too much things happening in this movie. So the witch council, they want to send. <laughs> they want to send one of their witches to Duke Atreides to have daughters. And there's a prophecy that says that they have a daughter. It'll become very powerful, and it'll be the most powerful bee in the universe. There you go. <laughs> that's that's happening. And so the witch says, "Okay, I'm gonna go to the planet of that Duke Atreides lives on, and I'm gonna find out what the hell this is all about." And he's like, "Go ahead and do that. Kill him if you can." She's like, oh, "We'll see what happens. I'm gonna put him through a whole bunch of tests. If he fails the tests, he'll die." <laughs> and Mofo gives this Dune. I guess <laughs> maybe maybe it's Dune. I don't know. Broadway don't welcome to the street. <laughs> so much of this weird. It's not gonna make yes it is. It's hard. It's, there's so much in this film, I can't remember all of it. Oh, this is not enough whiskey, Chaz, and not enough whiskey. <laughs> oh, okay, where are we? Okay, yeah. So then we cut to um House of Trades chat. And their planet is in a planet filled with uh seas and oceans, and we're introduced to Paul. Oh, by the way, Chad, there's like a weird thing they have in this movie where we constantly hear people's inner monologues, like their actual thoughts, but they're not like saying them out loud or anything. It's just like in their heads. And so they're, you know, looking off camera like this or just staring at somebody like intensely and you hear, you hear a whole conversation going on in their head. It is super off-putting. It does not work for this film. So there are multiple scenes, people just staring at each other. And like some people like use it, telepathy and stuff, they can communicate, but other times just people staring. And they have their internal monologues. It's just, even for like a simple line, it's like, Dune's hot. Or it's like, I want to kill him. And it's like, they're not saying the chat. It's just in their heads. It's like, this does not work. Cinematically, this, this, no. There's a reason why you just have dialogue. Not fucking internal monologues. Or you have like, you know, and you want to do it, have their narration play over a montage of scenes or something like that. I, I don't know. It, it just, it just, it's terrible. So we, we cut to Paul Atreides. And he's, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. Again, he's watching the same PowerPoint that we were watching at the beginning of the movie. He's like, he's learning about uh, Archaeus and Dune, the sandworms and, and the farming people. And he's, he's all, but he's excited about it. But then all of a sudden, Chad, he hears the door open behind him. And in walks these three guys. Uh, Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart from Star Trek before he was you know, known as, you know, Captain Picard and all that. But he's not Captain Picard, really, like, Captain Picard S. Chat. He's kind of an asshole. He's kind of like a, like a military general, military brat type of character. Uh, the other person is a Spock-like knockoff where he's, like, you know, pretty robotic-looking doctor. He has, like, a little, uh, like, um, red diamond dot in his forehead. And he's not really interesting. He plays an important part in the movie, but he's not interesting, chat. And then they have an owl man with him who has apparently herpes all around his mouth and it's very distracting all the herpes it's like purple purple discoloration and there's like bumps everywhere it's like that clearly is herpes and they're like leaking and he has like giant fucking eyebrows he looks like an owl man he's an owl with herpes chat and paul trades apparently he's been trained so well by his mother the witch that he recognized them as soon as they stepped in using his telepathic powers recognizing their footsteps and everything chat and they're like, oh, Paul, you shouldn't be have your back to the door. It could be dangerous. He's like, ah, oh, I knew it was you. My mother trained me well. Again, the force. It's really the force, chat. That's what it is. Owl boy of AIDS, exactly. Owl boy of herpes, technically. And let's be specific. It's, it's herpes. He's got all these bumps and pustules all around his lips, chat. We know, we know what that is. Um, Patrick Stewart's like, that's bullshit. Let's get into a duel. And then they, he proceeds to generate a, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, chat, but like a gelatin body armor like a blocky gelatin body armor and then him and paul start fighting and it's really awkward and weird and it does not work like this is their equivalent of a lightsaber duel i assume and it just looks bad very really terrible uh cgi i, I wouldn't know if it's cgi i wouldn't even describe the effects bad just bad effects whatever this is it's terrible uh it's like rotoscope it's like rotoscope effects chat and it just does not work he kicks patrick stewart's ass uh the Owl Man summons a giant dildo robot for Paul to fight next, and it has like all these buzz saws that come out of it. And he he beats the he beats the giant golden dildo. Um, after that, like Paul's like, "Whoo, I'm tired." So he goes ahead and talks to his dad, and you know, Duke Atreides. He's just looking out on the sea, and he's excited, he's like, "Ow, oh, son, you know, I'm really excited that that our family's doing so. I'm proud of you. We're gonna become the the new uh, leaders of uh, of Dune." Gotta mind the spice, gotta let it flow, as we all know. And the son's like, I agree, Dad. I'm glad I'm, glad I'm making you proud. And they have a nice bonding moment chat. 
He goes to talk to his mom. Uh, she says some stuff. She's, I mean, important character, but she gets nothing to do. She, she, you know what she gets to do, chat? She gets to tell exposition, and she gets to, to birth a baby later on the film in a really fucked up, creepy way. That's about it. Her and the Duke, they, they start uh, banging at one point, chat. And they go at it, and, they're, and he's like, ah, I wish I could marry you, my concubine. It's like, okay, you could still marry her, man. You're, you're going to be like the leader of fucking Dune. You got a lot of power. Just fucking do it. What's the big deal? He's like, ah, he re that's one of his biggest regrets in his life, chat. He never married his concubine. Uh, the witch from earlier, the leader of the witches, she comes to the planet, chat, and she talks to, I think her name was, what, Jessica? Jessica is, is, is Paul's mother and the wife of Duke uh, Atreides. The witch comes like, Jessica, listen, I, you fucked up. But you have to make amends right now. You knew this was coming this day. I have to test Paul. Because apparently anytime they have a baby chat, these witches, you got to do a test. Like a pain test. You got to put your hand in a box. And if after you survive this excruciating pain, you get to live, I guess. And so pa Paul, he gets some out of bed. He puts his hand in the box. And he goes, Wah! he freaks out, chat. The, 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 the witch sees like some visions, some weird stuff. Paul's also seeing visions, chat. He's seeing the visions of a, of a beautiful blue-eyed girl. Uh, who calls him Quaylox or something. He's like, I don't know what this means. Uh, and then I think the witch also gets those same visions. He survives the pain test after sticking his hand in the box. The witch is like, well, I'm satisfied. See you later. But the witch is like, okay, there's something special about this kid. Maybe he's the, the, the prophecy. Maybe even though he's not a girl, even though he's got a dick and balls, maybe there's something to this guy. I'll, we'll, 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 we'll touch on that subject much later on in the film. And so after that, you know, a little excursion. They don't tell fucking Duke Atreides they got attacked by a witch woman. They're like, okay, let's get going. And then they introduce one of the goofiest elements in this film chat. There's actually another, uh, <laughs> you know, one of many goofy elements. But when they're leaving to go into their ships uh, uh, to travel to Dune, they, they, they have this whole fucking ceremony. And, like, the Duke is holding a pug. <laughs> he just turns around. He's just holding the pug. This thing's just so happy to be there. It's like, what is going on here? And you see this pug throughout the entire film. He pops up in circumstances where he should not be popping up in. <laughs> he just looks so fucking confused. Early on in the movie, you see that the Emperor has like a pack of bulldogs that he keeps around. I are these symbols of their houses? Could someone explain these to me? I just don't know. I just don't know. But he has a pug, chat. They have a pug. They go. They board their ships. They go up to the space stations where all the scrotum babies are. And the scrotum babies ejaculate the spice out of their vaginal orifices. And they are transported without moving, chat. They go from one location to another. And now they're in Dune. And then all the ships land. And they're, you know, they're looking uh, after, like, oh, the Harkonnens. You know, they left, but they left a lot of surprises, chat. There's still residual troops. They're, they're fighting right now. They left traps in the various um, um, residences. And it's like, okay, this is a big issue. we got to stand our guard. Um, you know, got, got fucking Paul is introduced to a whole bunch of characters. Uh, uh, what's his name? Oh God! What's that? What's that actor's name? Who's in all the sci-fi films for like five minutes? Oh God! Chad, help me up here. Ugh. No, not Kyle MacLachlan. He was in. He he got killed by Kylo Ren in the beginning of The Force Awakens. Help me out here, chat. Why do they jizz into space? I don't. Know. Max von Sydow. Thank you, Chris Harris. Max von Sydow was in this film as a very young man. He's like young, but he's also old at the same time. Like, I think he's. I think he's always looked old. But he's like got a little color in his hair. He's got like a little blonde hair. They're introduced to him, and he's been on the fucking uh, Dune planet for decades chat helping out the Arconans, helping out the emperor but it's like there's more there's more there's more to this guy you know i think he's working with the, the farmer people um what else happens here oh we learned that through the owl guy that you know there's something there's more to this you know the Arconans, you know the despite them being so barbaric they 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 and we're finding like all their various devices are defeating their troops. They they have something up their sleeves. We must we must be uh, careful. There may be a traitor among us, or so, someone says there's a traitor. And apparently, chat the traitor is the doctor with the the with the red diamond in his head. And it's like he's the traitor, and it's kind of explained why he betrayed. Like his it's weird. Okay, I don't understand. His wife was murdered by Baron Harkonnen, and the only way to enact his revenge is to betray the Atreides family at one point in order for the Duke Atreides to get close to Baron Harkonnen and release a poisonous gas. That happens in the movie, chat. I don't know why that was so complicated. Uh, and really, it didn't really work at all. You know, it kind of fucked up in the end. But yeah, he's the beast, the big traitor, chat. And things are being set in the motion. Meanwhile, 
We go to the planet that uh, Baron Harkonnen's on. It's fucking gross. It's just, it's covered in slime and smog. There's a ton of pollution everywhere. Uh, like, the housing. I don't understand the housing, Chad. It's like, it's all outside. And, uh, but, like, everything's, it's like, a, imagine an apartment building, chat, where instead of being vertical, everything's horizontal. And there's no roof. I don't get it. And so they're up, they're just outside, just, and he's getting his daily pustule puncturing. And they're, they're leaking everywhere, and everyone's just all, oh, they're, they're all about Baron Harkonnen, guys. They think him and his diseases, his, his, his flabby, bloated body is the sexiest thing ever. And he does, too. He thinks he thinks very highly of himself, he, of all his pustules and things. We're introduced to a whole bunch of characters. Apparently, Sting is in this movie chat. Yes, Sting, the musician, is here. He plays one of the Harkonnen soldiers, the nephew of Baron Harkonnen, maybe. Uh, and he's like one of his assassins. Sting has no lines throughout most of this film. He says nothing up until the end of the movie, I think. Uh, and he's just there going... <sighs> and he just wants to kill things. That's all, that's all he's about. We have, he has like... Baron Harkonnen has another nephew. He's just this big hulking mass. He's like, he's fucking huge, chat. And he's as dumb as a stump. He, there's nothing to him. He just wants to murder things. Uh, Baron Harkonnen, again, he just tells us what the Emperor will be heard about in the PowerPoint presentation. I'm working with Emperor Saddam. Um, we're going to kill uh, Atreides. We're going to take back the spice. You know, one who controls the spice controls the universe. Yada, yada, yada. At one point, um, uh, he has a slave boy who comes in and is like putting all these nice purple flowers up for him. He's like, I want that fucking slave boy. And so he, you know, activates his uh, flight suit. And, you know, he goes up there and he has like an oil bath at one point. I don't know what the hell it is, Jeff. It's like this black substance, like leaks all down him. And he's like, he's all about it. He's like, Bleh. and then he goes over to the slave boy. And he takes out like a, he has like a little heart plug or something, chat. I don't really understand it, but he has a heart plug. He pulls that little fucker out. And then he just kind of begins licking his face and the blood and everything. People are like, look, this is fucking, even, even though his fellow are like, all right, this, little, this has gone too far. <laughs> and he's basically molesting this slave boy. And then he's dead. And then he dies because his heart plug got pulled out. And he's like, all right, well, I'm done with that. <laughs> Let's move on to the next scene. And we're back on uh, Arrakis, chat. Again, more stuff that's happening where, you know, they're, 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 we see like a scene of the sandworms. Uh, we, we, we learned that they're between 250 and 450 meters long. These things are fucking big. Uh, apparently, Max von Sydow's pretty impressed with Duke Atreides because Atreides is like, you know what? Because they go to check out one of the facilities and it's like, well, we, we try to prevent sandworm attacks by using these things called thumpers. And they put out a specific vibration that keeps them away from the, the, from the mining facilities. And apparently one of the malfunctions... And the worker says, oh, well, like, uh, well, the thumper, or whatever the fuck it's called, is deactivated. But there's too much spice. And he's like, and Duke Atreides is like, forget the fucking space. I'm here to save you. You're under my protection. And Max von Sydow's like, I like this guy. This guy's got a good heart. And they rescue as many people as, as they possibly can, chat. The worms take over the factory. But Max von Sydow's like, all right, these Atreides people, they're good people. I have your back, guys. I'll... I'll and then we learned that because he's part of the farmer people and, you know, they they learn that trades are good. I don't know. It, it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, so they go back home uh, and the, 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 the plan of attack is set in the motion. The doctor, he deactivates all the defenses um, uh, at the complex and the residences and things. Oh, there's an assassination attempt against uh, Paul Atreides at one point. Uh, the, the creepy woman you've seen, I forget the actress's name, but she's been a ton of stuff. Like the little dwarf woman you've seen in things. She like warns Paul, but then she gets killed later on in the film. Uh, the doctor, um, uses like a, a nerve agent on Duke Atreides and he reveals that I betrayed you because my wife was killed by Baron Harkonnen. And so I betrayed your family. So in this case, I'm going to rip out your tooth and put in a fake tooth with like a gas capsule. And so when he's close to to you because he will be because he's going to gloat you're going to bite down on that and that's going to go in his face and melt his face can you do that for me this is this is what i'm this is why i'm betraying your entire family for and murdering all these people yes the plan's a little elaborate yes some might say it's far-fetched but it's possibly my work <laughs> and so he lays his plan the motion the duke is captured by baron harkonnen's forces paul and and his mother are captured at one point, chat, and he's like, Baron Cohen's like, oh, take them out to the desert. No one can find the bodies. It doesn't fucking matter anymore because you, everyone knows the Harkonnens attacked uh, uh, Arrakis at this point, chat. Why are you going to hide the bodies? Everyone know you're, you're the biggest asshole in the body, in the, in the universe. What difference does it make? It doesn't matter. Um, and so the, the guys, they, they take him. They take Paul and his mother out to the desert. Uh, they, also, oh, they also have these, like, super suits. 
that he like, helped him survive in the desert wasteland. Apparently, the suit can do everything. It takes your sweat and like separates the salt from it, and you can drink it later. And also, you can just kind of walk around and shit in it too, just shit and piss in it. And that's used. You, that extracts the water. You can drink that. You're drinking. These people are drinking fucking shit water on this planet, chat. That's how terrible it is to live on Dune. And I don't think I don't think you walk around with a fucking diaper just filled with shit. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any goddamn sense. All right, but they do that drinking shit water. It separates all the germs and E. coli, chat. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. It is stupid. It yeah recycles urine. Yep urine. Yep 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 it does. <laughs> so uh all right yeah so they get they get a duke atreides um oh yeah brad dorf is in this movie too guys guy who voices chucky plays uh worm ton funny enough in our lord of the rings conversation plays worm ton in the uh the trilogy uh he plays an, another owl type guy like i think the the owl, other uh std owl man and this guy came from like a specific order chat i don't know if they actually legitimately say in the film but they seem to be very similar to each other because he also has like these big fucking eyebrows and he has like a mouth covered in herpes and i'm just like I, this there has to be something with this i don't understand yes billy billy bibbit uh saw good man from one flew of the cuckoo's nest god he had an oscar nomination for that role great 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 uh one very talented actor great uh character actor and it was fantastic in the film i think matter of fact that was his first movie he ever did so pretty good start to his career and he was initially uh tim burton's first choice for the joker which i think that would have been really cool in the in 1989 uh, batman film but i digress chat uh because he also sets his whole thing in the motion too, and uh, during when 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 um, Duke Atreides, he's kind of like all woozy and shit because he's got the shit kicked out of him. He's got the the trank dart in him, chat all the the nerve agent. It's kind of fuck up his head. Um, Baron Harkonnen, he's just like like uh, the doctor said before, chat. Baron Harkonnen's just gloating. He's just talking shit. Then he kind of floats away to do his monologuing, and then he's like, Baron Harkonnen is at you, but it's not Baron Harkonnen. Chat. It's Brad Dorf, and Brad Dorf is like looking at him. But but a Duke of Trace thinks that's that is clearly a Baron Harkonnen, and so he bites down the tooth and it releases a toxic gas into Brad Dorf's face. And Brad Dorf goes ah, and he just dies. Not a really epic death at all. I thought like his face would melt or something. He just, he just literally sticks up his hands and falls backward. That's it. And then fucking <laughs> Baron Harkonnen's reaction is pretty funny. He's like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> and so. Uh, uh, Duke Atreides is dead because he activated the poison. It fucking melts his face. We see that, actually. Uh, then we cut back to the desert. Apparently, at one point, uh, uh, Paul's mother, Jess is it Jessica? I think it's Jessica. Jessica is able to gain, use her mind powers on the two pilots, and she tells the pilot to take out her gag or whatever and cut her bonds and cut her son's bonds. Um... Uh, she convinces the one guy she has the mind control over to stab the other pilot with a poison blade chap. And so Paul, he takes care, he takes control of the ship. They realize through a the fucking force connection that uh, Paul's dad is dead. And they're like, oh, they're in mourning and everything. And then Paul's like, oh, we, we, the ship is damaged because we hit a goddamn rock. I got to bring her down. So they crash land the ship chat. They have to get out. There's like a storm brewing and everything, like a sandstorm. You know, no, no water. It's never rained on Arrakis before chat. But there's like lightning and you know thunder and everything. They uh, take refuge in this thing. They have these like body suits or whatever. Also, the doctor, uh, even though he betrayed the family, it's weird. He uh, he gave Paul and his mother the body suits they need to wear outside. And he, again, I don't understand the doctor's motivation in this film. Like, why would you betray this family just to get revenge on this one guy? Are you kind of already getting revenge because of the fact you're serving this much better family? Everyone thinks the Harkonnens are pieces of shit. It doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> Juicy's killing with this review. Ms. McCall, thank you, man. I'm, I'm trying to make sense of this movie. Do you think, I mean, does that make sense? Heat lightning, heat lightning. Yes, Joey, thank you. <laughs> he was brain, he was brain, oh, Movo Kid, that's right. He was brainwashed. Okay, because I think they mentioned at one point, Brad Dorf, I think, says to Duke Atreides that I broke the doctor's imperial programming because that's why he has the little uh, red diamond in his head, chat. Because that's a symbol, as we all know. A symbol for his loyalty and training within the Empire, I guess. I think that's what happens. Thank you, Mofo Kid. Thank you. Yeah, we nailed it. 
But thank you for letting me know. See, that's why I need you here, chat, because I'm going to mess it up with this review. <laughs> there are things that doesn't make sense to me, but you're clarifying, and I appreciate you. Thank you, Mofo Kid. Here's to you, my friend. I need more whiskey, by the way. There's a lot more movie left in this. Uh, so they crash land. They put on the goddamn suits and everything. Um... And, you know, Paul's like, he has, again, another, he has tons of visions in this movie chat. I don't know which one each specifically does. But then he learns that uh, my name will be Muhadib and the people will worship me as like a god or as a prophet at one point. I think that's what happens here. So I'll be known as Paul Muhadib. That's a big thing. And so he tells him, okay, we got to get the fuck going. Uh, we got to get to a bunch better shelter than this. So put on your, your shit suit. Uh, and let's get moving. So they're moving on to this other place where it looks like there's a lot more shelter chat, but there's a fucking sandworm behind them. It's like, oh, that's not good. He acti he activates like a, a thumper chat that creates a specific rhythm that distracts the sandworm, but that thing fucking malfunctions. All these fucking thumpers are malfunctioning. So they're running chat, you know, <laughs> behind this terrible blue screen with this very fake looking sandworm behind them, but someone activates another thumper somewhere else. And so that distracts the sandworm. So they're able to get to the, the other location. They're like, well, that was convenient. Thank God. Oh, yeah. Also, Paul mentions, uh, yeah, you're pregnant with my unborn sister, too. Uh, yeah, you, she, did you know about that? She's like, I did know about that. I was like, yeah, I, I got the thing, Mom. We're on the same wavelength now. And it's like, it's a really weird, because they, they cut inside to her womb. They don't actually, like, go up or anything, chat, but they have, like, this whole, like, fake baby fetus thing in, like, a menagerie of blood and viscera, and it's just not great to look at. It's like, I don't want to look at that. No, thank you. Do you not? You did not need to do that. And it's just it's kind of floating there. It's all like, man. It's like it's not great. Not great. Mirko Chai with yeah, beautiful and everything like that. But I don't want to go in there and see whatever the fuck David Lynch thinks <laughs> a fucking um, vagina looks like. It doesn't. It's like no, no, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> um. So yeah, we're at the other place, uh, and they are come upon by the farming people. And the foreman people are like, ah, oh, we're going to take your water suit. But then they start fighting. They start wrestling chat. The mother takes control, one of them, uh, the guys. And then they go, oh, you're one of the witches. Oh, you will be worth 10 times your weight in water. And she goes, oh, you know, we can, I bet we'll be even worth more. We can train your people in the ways of the, 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 the our planet. The, uh, I already forgot their name. The Atreides. And they're like, oh, you're, you're. Uh, Jessica Atreides is Paul Atreides. We know about you. We, we've heard that you're great. Max von Sydow told us about you. Heard great things. Paul, he's like looking at all this from afar. He's like, oh, mom, mom. He gets attacked by this woman who he saw in his dream chat who was, he was smooching with earlier. I don't remember her name. Um, I don't know what her name is. Uh, we're going to call her the wife. The wife. I think the wife. That's where That's her name, chat. Of Paul Atreides. Because they, they start smooching. They, they start banging. They get married, chat. And he's like, I know who you are. And so they have this whole conversation. And the, the, the fucking farming people are like, okay. Uh, you know what? You've proven yourself worthy of our people. Uh, but part of our culture is we got to give you new names. And they're like, uh, well, your mom's a woman. And so we're just going to name her because she doesn't have any rights, apparently. It's like, that's kind of fucked up. But, Paul... You get to pick your own name. He's like, sounds good to me, man. I want to be called Muhadib. And they're like, sounds good. We'll call you Paul Muhadib. He's like, brilliant. Let's get going. And then they go, <laughs> Rose Venture, walk up the street. <laughs> then they go in, down, I don't know, into their Morlock Society chat. They discover that there are uh, thousands upon thousands of caches of water, like decaliters chat. That's I never heard that term, a decaliter. Thousands and thousands of decaliters in these huge caches all around the planet. Like, yeah, man, we got all this stuff. See, we're the people who are really in charge. It's like these huge society of the, of the farming people. Or the freemen. I don't know what the fuck they're called. Mr. Yasman, Commando, I'll add that to the list. Absolutely. Uh, and so, you know, they're all excited about all this water. Paul's like, all right, this is cool. You know, here's the thing. Uh, we all have a common enemy. We got to go beat that fat ass Baron Harkonnen. He killed uh, my, my people. He killed my dad. I will train you in the ways... Of the Atreides, Chad. Because apparently the Atreides, they had a secret plan. They were they, they developed a new weapon. And it's very weird. And visually, it's not great. <laughs> it's cheap. Look, it's cheap. Because it has no effect. It's like a sonic weapon. And it's like, it's this weird rectangle gun box. And they don't really fire a trigger. They just like, they have this mouthpiece 
thing that goes in their neck up there like a microphone and they aim this fucking thing and they say like certain words and verbs and things and that activates it and it blows things away this blows them up it can destroy rock it can explode people uh just concussive damage chat and it does not look cool whatsoever it looks really really lame but that's what we're going with because they have to keep the budget down at this point because there are probably tens of millions of dollars over budget. It's like, we, this is, oh God, the studio already knew that this was not going to be the next Star Wars. It's like, okay, we cannot give you lasers. <laughs> Their laser gun budget is, is, is gone. Can you use something else? And David Lynch was, what if I use the power of one's voice as a weapon? And it's like, okay, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> and that's what they do. He trains in the way of, of the Atreides chat. They use their voice boxes and they're fake looking fucking guns and we get like tons of pratfalls uh they uh but in order to prove himself of uh, the people uh, his mom has to drink the, the 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 juice of the earth i don't know what's called the mother water water of life chat she has to drink the water of life because that gives you powers i think and we need a witch because they have a witch chat but she's not long for this world she's dying like, we need a new witch your mom's a witch right and he's like yeah she kind of is uh he's like okay drink this water and so she starts drinking a chat, and she's getting all these weird visions, but she becomes more powerful. She becomes like the witch earlier in the movie that we saw, the leader of the witches. But chat, it causes the premature birth of her daughter, Alia. Uh, that's the name of the kid. And so she births this uh, maybe a month old baby chat. I, I doubt, maybe two months. It's not looking good, this thing. And again, we cut inside of her, and it's like, ugh. This is like this little fetus that's just hanging out and this like floating this menagerie of just blood and meat it's like this is not no this is not what this looks like but all right we're just gonna go with it and so she births this thing and this kid apparently was born of all the powers of the witches this is one of the, the prophecies one part of the prophecy where you'll birth a super being and that's what this kid is alia and she grows in the span of two years to like uh, an eight-year-old it's like this is kind of bizarre um but paul's got to prove himself too and even though he's talking he's like i got one thing to do we must conquer the worms of dune and so uh he decides i'm gonna go ride that one and he goes outside chat uh in the middle of the fucking day in the middle of the heat 300 degree temperature by the way no fucking helmet or anything this guy they stick these fucking tubes up their nose and they're just shitting the entire time it's like that's good as long as you start shitting yourself you'll be a-okay and then he finds a big old fucking worm and he just cr climbs on top of it sticks like these hooks into it and he starts riding it and he's nailed it that's it that's all you have to do it was easy <laughs> why did you do this before and so they conquer the worms, the sandworms, and they're like, woo! And like then they begin their two-year campaign, which I imagine was far longer in the book, and they actually went into detail. But you know, a whole montage of them attacking the uh, Harkonnen spice factories because Paul says, we are going to take this planet back. Uh, they do not understand our power here. And if we stop the spice flow then uh, everyone will freak the fuck out because this is just this is spice used for everyday life around the universe whether it be getting high improving your mind your body or you know just space travel it, everyone will have to deal with this thing and we'll kill all we'll defeat all of our enemies at once and you know baron harcon he's very upset about this he sends his dumb fucking nephew to like solve the problem he does nothing it stings there he's just going <sighs> not saying anything chat just fucking start like not make it completely but he's got like this weird plastic like speedo on uh like a, he's got like a like he's you know what the, the stormtroopers wear like a he's got like a uh, like a like a blue gray cod piece uh it looks like a clamshell and he's just standing out in the middle of the fucking room and you know baron harcon's like god i just want to fuck you so bad but you're my nephew and it's like even though i don't mind fucking little slave boys i uh, I'm, gonna, I, I'm not gonna do you i'm not gonna do you fade his name's fade by the way and i'm not gonna do that to you but we gotta deal with this thing but they're not able to deal with the chat they keep fucking up uh and the emperor's like okay the the, stu the the spice flow is stopped that's the key to the universe i have to get involved the fucking scrotum babies they're very upset scrotum babies like listen emperor you got we told you years ago to to handle this situation and you gotta take down paul atreides and they're like what are you talking about we killed him he's like oh he's alive he's like what he's like i i'm gonna go to that planet because bear harkonnen told me he was dead and so him and his whole entourage and his armies they go to um they go to dune uh, meanwhile, Paul keeps having various visions, and uh, he's like, ah, you know, I'm to truly ascend to basically godhood, chat, uh, so he can use the word of God. They mentioned God a lot in the last half of the, of the film, last third, I should say. He's like, I have to drink the water of life, and so he drinks the water of life, 
Uh, he's been baning the the girl, his, his wife from earlier chat. A lot, a lot of sex, a lot of smooching. He drinks water like it could kill him, Jack. It could kill any male. It only works in the females. When he drinks it, he he's fine. He I mean, he fucks him up a little bit, but he gets superpowers. Uh, he gets the blue eyes and everything, and he you know he's more in command of himself than ever. And he's like, all right, now we must uh, launch our final attack. And then Baron Harkonnen, the Emperor, they're all there. Uh, Baron Harkonnen's nephew's head's been fucking decapitated. And Baron goes like, oh shit, this is serious now. He's like, all right. Emperor's like, okay, you have not been able to handle the situation. The scrotum babies are upset. We got to do something about this guy, this Muhadib. And he's like, all right, well, fine, fine. We'll combine our forces and we'll take him out. But chat, Paul uh, Trades, now Paul Muhadib, he's like 10 steps ahead of him. Because he's got all of his, the entire forces of Dune, all the Freeman people behind him he's got multiple sandworms like a dozen sandworms they're all gonna attack the facility that the emperor saddam and baron harkonnen are at he sends an emissary there as a diplomat he's just basically there to talk shit it's his sister alia oh patrick stewart comes back at one point in the movie chat patrick stewart's back uh he's apparently been fighting a while he's there also the battle the pug remember in the beginning of the movie chat the pug's still alive so they're they're carrying the pug in the battle <laughs> and the pug's like what the fuck's going on i'm a pug <laughs> What's the point? But I guess he's the mascot of... Uh, he's like the, the the sigil of House Atreides. And they carry this little fucker in the battle every single time. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Uh, So, Alia, she's there. And she's using her witch power. She attacks the witch telepathically. And she's just like, nah, it fucks her up. She's talking shit to the Emperor. Baron Harkonnen's like, that girl's a little fucking creepy. Not, not my... You know what? Uh, she's not up to my taste. Not my thing. No, thank you. <laughs> I've heard the little slave boy. She's like, I'm going to fuck you up, fat man. And she's like telepathically controlling him. Emperor's like, oh, okay, this is weird as shit. Uh, Paul's forces begin attacking. They they blow a, a big giant hole into their defenses, chat. All the sandworms and the, the Freeman people, they start attacking everybody. Uh, Emperor and his guys, they get on their little stations and their little turrets. They start fighting. The Emperor, he's getting involved, chat. All the Harkonnen... And Saddam troops are heading out there, but they're getting blasted, chat. Using the the, the the sonic weapons, they're just you know they're just going. Ah, even though nothing's hitting them, they're just dying. Worms are eating people. It's tons of stock footage, chat. There's this one shot of this worm with just its mouth opening that you see at least I'm gonna say between five to seven times. It's the same exact fucking shot each and every single time. And it's like this doesn't this doesn't work. This is kind of lame. Again, they ran out of money at this point. They're just using stock footage. Uh, but Paul's like, all right, we're kicking these guys' asses. Meanwhile, we cut back. He's like, okay, Alia, activate the trap. This is for my dad. And Alia is like, come close. And she, the, the little girl is the creepiest fucking voice in the world. One, it, it's not her voice. It's dubbed over. But the actress can't even, like, mouth it. They can, they couldn't get the ADR right. And this is the little girl. So the way she's just moving and just looking at things like, this is this does not working. She's like, come closer, Baron. And she sounds like, ew. <laughs> sounds creepy. I guess like a witch. And the Baron's like, oh, yes, please, little girl, tell me. And she, uh, he goes closer to her and he, she just takes a fucking knife and slits his fucking uh, mouth chat. Just like that little Joker smile. Like from like here to here. He's like, ah. And she rips out his nipple, his nipple tubes. They are connecting his, his suit. Because I guess the suit is also connected to his nipples. She rips those fuckers out. And he's, he's like, oh, he's, oh, I'm too fat. I can't do anything. And he can't control his suit chat. Meanwhile, fucking Paul, he blows a hole into the top of the pyramid defense structure that Baron Harkon, the emperor, in. And, you know, Harkon, he just gets sucked the fuck out of there. And he's eaten by a sandworm chat. He's like, ah, and this thing just eats him. It's not even satisfying. It's just kind of, it's again, it's like, it gets a blue screen. And it looks super lame. It's like, all right, he's done. Baron Harkon's been taken care of, chat. Honestly, they should have just had his mouth, like, everything up until the worm thing was awesome. I mean, having, a, like, his face kind of cut like that, giving him, like, a glass glow smile, and then having his nipple tubes pulled out, like, that's pretty fucking cool. You know? Uh, but now he gave me my sandwich. And then it's like, okay, Emperor's like, all right, we're, we, we lost this. We're, we're fucked. Paul and his troops, they go ahead marching in. Uh, the Emperor, he's like, well, I only got, like, this contingent. I guess I'm, this is it. And then uh, Paul, he introduces up, I am Paul Atreides, now Paul Muhadib. And, but, there's still one more threat left, chat. It is Sting. <laughs> Sting is still alive. And even though his entire family's been killed at this point, he watched his uncle get his his fucking nipple tubes pulled out. Anybody say he's like, I, I got this, guys. I still got this. <laughs> and so he's like, I will fight on, on your behalf, Emperor. And I will k k kill this infidel. And put Paul and is like, let's fucking do it, man. And they get and they start wrestling, chat. They get into a knife fight. And Sting's got like the upper hand for most of it, chat, but 
uh, then you know Paul starts uh, speaking this, this fortune cookie nonsense like I bend like a reed and he just manages to bend and throws him and then fucking stabs stay in the throat his no it's the thing he needs to use to sing but he stabs in the throat chat and Paul's like I'm just fucking pissed so I'm just gonna yell at you and he yells chat and he just fucking kind of like I don't know, hits his chest and the and the ground beneath sting like cracks open he's like whoa you just did that with the power of your voice it's like, well, you don't even need a little sound box gun thing. I'm like, ah, oh, you have the voice of God. He is a holy man. He is the prophet. And everyone's like, Jesus Christ, this is weird. Alias starts talking about, yes, he is the chosen one. He is Muhadib. He is the, what's what's he called? He's the Kizwats. He is the Quiz, the Quizza, the Quizats Hadarak. He's the Quizats Hadarak. I don't know what that means. I think that's the first time it's mentioned, but we'll go with it. Maybe it's mentioned one other time. I don't fucking know. But he's the Quizos Hadarach, and he's like, I speak for God. I am the word of God, and I perform miracles. And then for the first time ever, chat, he commands uh, rain to fall on Arrakis, on Dune. And for the first time ever, rain falls upon Arrakis. And everyone fucking worships a Muhadim, and that's the movie. That is Dune. This man basically declares himself the voice of God, and for all its purposes, he seems to be doing that. And yeah, Chad, this is a, not a great film. <laughs> it is super fucking goofy. It is overly complicated, incoherent in many places, uh, poorly acted in many cases. Oh, Josh!